So, we spoke about it before, but I want to bring something, an idea, in the content of Yom Kippur. But it's not only for Yom Kippur. It's good for, I think, I hope, for everything else. What's the difference between happiness and sadness? Anybody can tell me? Yeah, Yoni. Yeah, you. Yoni. Um, happiness ha is like more like purpose as opposed to sadness is the feeling of emptiness. Uh, one second, I don't get emptiness is bad? Um, yeah. Emptiness is bad? Yeah. I got to talk to you outside later. Uh, okay, fine. Anybody else wants to try? So he says, happiness is what? Is, uh, what did I say before? It's purpose. Purpose. And, and sadness uh, is emptiness. Okay. Remember what you said. Anybody else want to try? Yeshua, philosopher. Happiness. He's all warm gun. Yes, yes. Hey. Happiness and sadness. No? Eita? Come on, guys, you're smart. <laughs> yeah, he always cheats. <laughs> you see, I, I'm surprised at you guys. You know, everybody wants to be happy, nobody wants to be sad, and nobody knows really what's the difference between happiness and sadness. How about uh, joyfulness and depression? Joy and depression, how about that? Maybe that will help you. I'm here. What's the difference, Ishak? Who's sitting there, Rebbe? Yeah. Uh, what's the difference? Okay. You ready for that? Are you ready? You ready? I'll tell you that there's no difference. There's no difference. Well, first of all, because you don't know really what the difference is between the two of them, but there's no difference. These are all... How would you call, call them? State of mind. They're all feelings. Feelings. So let's say, for example, let's say you like a certain team, okay? Arguments, like, I don't know. What team do you like? Um, you like football? No, I'm not big on sports. No, okay, Go, oh, good. I'm Ashkenaz. I know it might sound surprising to you. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm not so big on sport either, but let's say you pick up a team. Yankees. Yankees, okay. And I like, let's say, the Mets, okay? Well, I don't know, what's the Yankees' Red rivalry? Red, Red Sox. Sox, okay. So if I win, if I win, I'm happy on the same game that you are sad. sad. But the game is a game. You should know that those things are just those things. They're nothing. They're just your feeling that you are feeling internally. Internally, you're feeling those feelings. Sadness. Happiness, joy, blissfulness, depression, and so on. These are all feelings that you feel inside. Upset, stress. These are all your feelings that you feel inside. The way you are deciding to, uh, to process a certain experience. Let's call it this way. And when a person is really sad, and when things are really difficult for him, what gesture does a person usually do? Hmm? He sighs, maybe. Or... I, I, he looks. Looks up. He looks up. Person looks up. So now let me ask you a question. Now that you guys are so smart and you are so uh, uh, in tune, where is up? Can you point up to up? Up, up, yeah, up, up. This is up, right? Okay. Hey, shalom. Shalom alechem, shalom. Shalom akoni. Oh, Hashem. Could be worse. Could be better. So you tell me uh, uh, this is up, right? So I'm going like this, this is up. Okay. Would you ever, did you ever think about that? That, you know, I'm pointing up and up is there? Did you ever think about this? Or you just automatically go like this. Anybody thought about it? You thought about it, Yossi? Mm -hmm. Anybody thought about it? What are we standing on? Where do we live? 
Earth. On Earth. Okay. So America is about what's the uh, what's the line of America? What are we at? Uh, Forty-three. At Forty-three. So if this is the equator, forty-three. Give it a tilt. So we are something like this. So basically, when we point up, we basically point something like this. Right? Am I right? Isn't it? So we're not pointing up. Now, it, maybe if you are not even on the North Pole, a little bit uh, before the North Pole, <coughs> and you go like this, maybe then you're up. You don't even know where up is. You don't know what up and if you are in the, uh, I don't know, in the equator, you place up, basically you're pointing 90 degrees. Isn't up a concept? I ask you where is up. So you didn't tell me a concept, you pointed up. Okay, let me ask you a question. Good. Where is north, where is south? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the <center. laughs> what is north? Nothing. Is north anything? No. The direction. The direction that this, who decided? If I'll take you out of earth, I'm going to ask you where is north? Do you know where north is? There's no such thing as north. No. no. Right. Whoa. Okay, so you don't know where it is, right? You don't even know what's forward and what's backwards. You don't even know that. I'll tell you why. If I'm going to go from here, west, what we call west, okay. where am I going to get eventually? <laughs> California. Yeah. After that, Hawaii. After that, I'm not so good in geography, but yeah. Yeah. Japan. Japan. I get to Japan. So Japan is west of the United States, what we call the Far East. Because from the other direction, it could be east. So why would you call it the Near West? <laughs> it's, both. it's both at the same time it basically means absolutely nothing it's completely arbitrary of what you call what you call because if I'm going to go from here west and you're going to go from here east we're going to come at the same point you went backwards to me and we came up in the same place it doesn't make any sense all those feelings all those things that we call are just, just they mean nothing wasn't direction like created based off the person, based off the person himself? So if I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward. If I'm if I'm turned backwards, I'm looking backwards. It's based off the person. So your backwards is my forward. It can't be. So we're we're, we're two different no. people. No, no, we don't. Okay, so so very good. So therefore, what's the what's the derivative of that? So if your backwards is my forward, what does it mean? That all that we're experiencing is all personal. It's all internal. It's all personal. Now I'm going to explain to you that. Once you understand that, that all your feelings, everything, is just your own interpretations, unless you choose not to take care of them, right? Uh, you have a problem, but if you choose to take care of them, you become the master of your experiences. And therefore, there's no such thing as good and bad. There is an experience. And that's something you have to understand. Most people don't even think about what they feel but rather, or even call good or bad, they let other people to determine to them what's good and what's bad. What's successful, what's not successful. You don't know anymore. Nothing is yours, and, and which is so pathetic because that idea is determined by other people who cannot make an, a, 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 you know, they are not, they're not masters of their own faith, of their own experiences. So it becomes a chaos that we live in. You know, you are exposed to, to, to media, to radio, to all these things, that they decide to, for you what's good and what's bad, what's happy and what's sad, and you're okay with that. But you don't even know what you're feeling. So next time you tell me you're happy, or next time you tell me you're sad, I'm going to ask you this question. 
Is it really, are you really happy? Are you really sad? Or this is just what you decided to play along society, to society's role? There's no such thing. It's all your own, your own expressions. It's all your own mind, the way you decide. For example, you look at me, right? Right? Am I here? How do you know that I'm here? I'm not here. The only thing that you see me here is what? It's because the light comes and reflects off me, goes back into your eyes, goes to the nerve, to the back of your head, into your brain. Basically, you're experiencing me because that's the way you experience it. If I will be able to create a hologram now of myself, it will be the same thing to you. They have those things, by the way, that I could create. I could sit in, I don't know where, in, in, in Kyoto in Japan, and I could sit here with you, and we could have a face-to-face uh, -face conversation, just hologramming myself into you. The same thing as we have in Skype and all these things that we have, you know, how do you call this thing that you have? Uh, FaceTime. FaceTime and all these things, right? So I can, I can have a 3D hologram that's sitting here with you, and we can sit down, and, and I can talk to you. I can talk to Michael. Hey, Michael, how are you? And we'll talk like this. The only thing is we cannot touch each other, but we can see each other. I see his body here, and I'm there. So it's all, it's all, it's all an illusion. You have to understand that the way you are feeling good or bad is only determined by you. Is only determined by you. It's not determined by anything. It's how you choose to interpret that. You told me that sadness is emptiness. I think emptiness is a wonderful thing. By the way, routine is a bad thing or a good thing? Great thing. Who said great thing? You said the great thing? Good Why is it great thing? It's a structure. That's what it's I a structure. Okay, well, and what do you do with the structure? Um, you have happiness or happiness or, yeah. the only thing you have from structure is is okay let me play devil's advocate okay mm -hmm. you have a controlled environment where nothing is challenging you and you are like a robot going on like this it's boredom you never experience it and and then and then it could be the other way around on the contrary structure gives you stability it gives you a sense of stability. How do you balance between the two? So, there is a concept in, in and we've been saying him a lot, there's what is so-called the Chenayo, the, the tea ceremony in Japan. Everybody knows it from Karate Kid, you know, but it's, it's nothing like this. It's not between two lovers, by the way, uh, uh, this, you know, the tea ceremony. Tea ceremony is a spiritual experience. It's very interesting, the whole atmosphere around it and everything. But what's very interesting about the tea ceremony is once you enter the garden, you start to shed a little bit of your own self-experience as you come into the room and you kind of humbly open the gate and you kind of crawl inside and you close it. You're supposed to leave the world behind you. And at that moment, there is nothing. There is nothing. It's a form of meditation. It's nothingness. It's emptiness. And that gives you tranquility. We cannot escape from the, from the stress of the day-to-day -day routines, of the pressure that life, actually life does not put pressure on us, that we had put on ourselves in the excuse of life. I should say it correctly. That craziness that we put upon ourselves with achievement that, if, if, if you ever, by the way, somebody said, you ever seen a U-Haul, you know, tagging along behind a hearst? What? A U-Haul behind a hearst? It's no. A hearst? I think that they laid the, the dead person. Oh. No, there's no U-Haul with all your stuff that you collected and accumulated going. You're just going, do you in the casket, woohoo, that's it. There's nothing there, just you and the casket. So, hey. 
Okay, so the uh, that concept of coming in and 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 allowing life to throw all this at you, it's your choice. It's absolutely your choice. You allow life to do this to you. Don't blame anybody. Achievement, achievement, I need to achieve this, I need to achieve that, I need to do this, I need to do that. You never allow any space of work. That's why I don't like bonsai. What happened to bonsai? You take bonsai, you confine its space by cutting its roots all the time, and the tree doesn't grow. You're not going to grow if you're not going to allow yourself that space where in that space there's nothing. There's no good, there's no bad, there's no telephones, there's nothing. There's only that moment. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. See if you can. When you go to shul, on Shabbat, only on Shabbat, start on Shabbat. Arab Shabbat, Shabbat morning, and Mincha. Try not to talk. The only thing you're allowed to talk, the only words that Allah come out of your mouth, as we spoke about it on Friday, the only words, as the Zohar says, the only words that Allah come out to your mouth are praises to Hashem, you know, the tefillah, or the vretara that you have to say, or you say to another person. Nothing else. Nothing else. Try to do that. You'll see how difficult it is. You have no idea how much are we wasting our words and wasting the opportunity to have this sacred space that we call shul to really elevate our spirits up high. We don't have that. And so therefore you go and it becomes just another thing that you go to. It's like going to... I know Smorgasburg or going to Atlantic City or going like this. Just that you wrap yourself with some kind of a white cloth on you and you you know move like a like you like you're doing something. You think that the more you move, the better it is. You don't understand anything. You really don't understand anything. Try to do that. Try it. Try it. Try it on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur around the corner. Try it on Yom Kippur. Not to speak anything besides. The tefillah or the Torah. Nothing else. Create that space. And that's exactly why Yom Kippur comes. Yom Kippur gives us an opportunity to have emptiness. We should not be afraid of emptiness. We are afraid of emptiness because we are afraid to be with ourselves. That's why we always need to create those external experiences of feelings of comfort and discomfort and so on and so forth. Sadness, happiness. These are all feelings that we create because we're afraid to stay with ourselves, alone, empty. There's nothing wrong with emptiness. And that, by the way, goes into your houses as well. The way we decorate the house. We load the house out with bookshelves, with books, with sofas, with tables, with chairs, with pictures. Sometimes you go to houses, there's not even an inch free on the wall. Pictures, 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 all over. I've seen this, this house of this woman in Israel. Everywhere there was a picture. There was an, I think, a two by two square with no, with nothing. I mean, pictures and posters and of and anything in the world, from huge pictures of Inuit Indians, you know, in, in Eskimos to I don't know what. Uh, I think a person like this is afraid to be alone. Luomazot. If you go, for example, you take the Japanese concept of clean lines, emptiness to allow you to experience things. You don't need a big house, you need a small room because you're okay with that. That quiet, we are afraid of that. 
Yom Kippur is a tremendous opportunity. We don't have to worry about eating. What would you like to eat? Would you like to eat some bagels and lox? What would you like to eat? Shawarma, falafel, pizza, pizza, sushi, sushi. Do they hear steak? The steak, steak, prime grill, first, you know. On a bone, 32 ounce steak with a bone like this, seared. Wagyu beef. Drink, what would you like to drink? Water, tea, coffee, green tea, matcha, jasmine tea, herb tea, beer. What kind of beer? Black beer, white beer, this kind of beer, Oktoberfest, Septemberfest, you know. Would you like whiskey, bourbon, wine? What do you, it's all, all it's, I don't want anything, I just want to experience. If you ever would be in love, you don't need all this decoration. You just want to be you and the person merging into one. That experience of I don't need anything around me. I don't need any kind of, 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 uh, of uh, you know, theatrical makeup around me. I need just to be in that moment. Why won't you, here, you had a baby, right? Would it make a difference to you if your wife will give birth at the hospital? Or she would give birth at the, uh, at the uh, I don't know, Mandarin Hotel over there, Seven Star Hotel, with the chandeliers and, you know, playing uh, Rodrigo in the background. Uh, what, what, would, what would be better for you? As long as the baby comes out of As long as the baby doesn't make a difference, that's exactly the point. If you have meaning with the event, you don't need all this decoration around you. As long as the baby comes out, it's okay. Mother is okay, baby is okay. I don't care where it is. That's exactly the point. When you need all these things around you, there's something wrong with you. You need to look at yourself. When you get up in the morning and you think that things are bad for you, you should ask yourself, well, why? Why is it bad? Why is it bad for me? I'm good. I'm okay. Baruch Hashem. I'm okay. I can get up in the morning. I, I can't get up in the morning. Imagine you want to get up and you can't get up. Huh? I think we're going to have a problem there, Houston. You can get up in the morning, excuse me, you can go to the bathroom and stand and pee. <sighs> right? Say it agrees with me. I told you this a million times. I remember when I was a kid, I read a book about the experience of Israeli uh, uh, POWs in Syria. So a guy wrote there that he was about to give up. He was about to go hang himself in the bathroom. He says, I just cannot take the torture in which those, those creeps had tortured me. You have no idea. So he was about to hang himself in the bathroom. So as he's hanging, he's about to go, he sees that, that somebody inscribed on the wall there, like scraped it in the world in Hebrew. If you can read this while you're peeing, there's still hope. So he didn't kill himself. Those little things in life. It's not so bad. Why are you feeling so bad for yourself? Oh, I feel bad for myself. Life is so hard for me. Mommy didn't nurse me enough. Come on. Life is good. Life is good because you decided to be good. Life is bad because you decided it to be bad. And if you decide that life is bad, you will have to give a din v'cheshbon, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you will come and he will tell you, excuse me, it wasn't so bad, look at this. Let me show you what happened to your friend who died as a junkie. Let me, die, let me show you what happened to your friend who, who had a car crash, or this guy was immobile, and this guy became uh, handicapped, and this one, his wife divorced him, and this one, you know, his children, you don't know what, stole his money, and you're pretty good. So you, you had a house, right? You had a house, you had a house. Your wife was loyal to you? Yes, she loved you. She loved you. You loved your wife? I did. You had children? Yes. Your kids were good? Baruch Hashem. Shomer Torah Mitzvot? They were. They respect you? They did. So why are you complaining? You remember your friend that had a big house, that had, uh, you know, two and a half acres in King's Point? Remember that house? You know, big five bedroom. It's a five bedroom. It's on the first floor only, you know, you know, with the whole thing, with the swimming pool, with the maids. Remember, remember the guy? Remember the guy? Yeah, yeah. The, the guy that his wife cheated with him, with the gardener, and the, the, the IRS took the money because he's, you know, remember him? Look at him where he's at, he's, you know, right now. He's already gone for 20 years while you were living in your small house. So it's not so bad. 
Why are you telling him about my creation that is bad? What are you going to ask our Kadosh Baruch Hu, huh? What are you going to tell him? You know what you got to tell him? You got to tell him nothing. You know why? Because you never bother to experience yourself. And there is no better day than Yom Kippur to experience yourself. You, yourself, as you are. Don't worry about food. Don't worry. It's, it's going to go. It's, by the way, it's very easy this year. Relatively speaking, of course. Right? You're going to end up pretty early. It's not so bad. Oh, Hashem, you made it for another Yom Kippur. Why are you complaining? Why are you afraid? Huh? You're afraid of yourself? That's what it is? You're afraid of yourself? You're afraid to be alone? Why are you complaining? What's your problem? What's so difficult for you? You can't get up in the morning? Fine. We can solve your problem. We can make it that you don't have to get up in the morning anymore. Would you like that? Anybody wants that? You want that? Okay. That nothingness is good. Things are not good. Things are not bad. Things are what you decide them to be. If the sun gets up in the morning, is that good or bad? Well, decide how, depends on what you decide. It could be bad. It could be good. It could be meaningless. It could be the most wonderful thing in the world. It all depends on you. And don't think that it's only because people, because even if you're being machines, you know, things would not be perfect. Life is not perfect. There's no such thing as perfect life. There's no such thing as perfect life. Oh, there's always something that's going to go wrong. Even if you live among robots and machines, they'll, they'll, sometimes they have their mind on their own. Machines stop working. You know, you have to fix it. Nothing is perfect. And that's the beauty of it. To appreciate the imperfection. In you as well. Because that imperfection inside of us is what allows us to do tshuva. What allows us to repair and to fix ourselves. That's the, that's the thing. So, for example, let's make it a little bit more real to you. Let's say, for example, you take, what's his name, uh, Mr. Trump, right? At the 205, he said something bad. Okay, so he said, listen, you're right. What I said at 205 was bad. It was a horrible thing. I don't know what he said. But let's say you said it was bad. But I changed I'm a different person. I made tshuva. I fixed my ways. I, I, whatever I said today, I do 180 degrees. On the contrary. It's a good thing that you brought. Unlike some people who don't change it. You get the same, the same pony over and over again. You understand? That imperfection is what allows us to change. Those little challenges are there for a reason, to show us to way, the way to find a positive experience. Right now, today. You saw today, the weather today? What weather? How was the weather today? Anybody wants to describe it to me? Foggy, rainy, Foggy, rainy cold, cold. It was windy. Right? My sister asked me, so how, how's, how's the weather by you? Because over there, it's hot. I said, oh, it's very romantic. It's to me, what do you mean? I said, it's cold, it's dreary, it's, you know, misty because it was raining. And so she said, so what did you do in, the, in this romantic day to your <laughs> wife? You, you went to a romantic place? I said, no, I made her breakfast and, you know, I made her some green tea. And, you know, it was just great to listen to a little bit of jazz. That's wonderful. It's a good day today, right? It depends on your experience. How you choose to interpret that experience. The experience it is. The, day is. the day is the day. But how you choose to interpret that, that's the problem. How are you going to come and ask for Mechila from Makadosh Baruch Hu if you regret the fact that he gave you life? Because you always complain. You're never happy. You always bitch and moan. Or always complain. And you're going to come to Akadosh Baruch Hu and ask Mechila for what? The first thing you have to ask Mechila for complaining. Even if you say, I didn't do anything. Yes, you did. You complained. Things were not good for you. Well, not good for you. Everything's good. Don't you understand? The bracha, the kavim, the kavim, chalulim, chalulim. Look at how miraculous our body is. And that's Yom Kippur, Rabbotai. Maybe you should go and experience maybe a little bit of a, of a tea ceremony somewhere. 
and experience that and learn a little bit about deeper mystical aspects of life. It's not all about the Jets or the Giants or the Yankees or the Mets or whoever is out there. I don't know, I don't know anymore. I don't know, Mongolians, I don't know. The Mongolians. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Go experience something else. Look, learn to enjoy the void. Because after all, this is how Kadosh Baruch Hu created the world. He made a space. And in that space, the world was created. You need to create that space, a void inside of you, where things can grow and develop. If everything is cramped, it becomes soggy. It becomes condensed. It becomes unpleasant. You need to air things out. Create some space. Throw away things. Clear some things from, from your house and from within yourself. That's one of the concepts of tashlich. You know, we throw things out. We're making space. And that's just the same thing for us. So, Abutai, get used to that. What I told you now could last you, believe me, not only a year of work, a lifetime of work. Work, working on yourself, on the way you look at things. There are certain people who could never, never break away from the negative perspective, regardless of what you give them. You can give them everything for free. You can give them college for free, housing for free, food for free, cars for free, anything for free. And they would still complain and feel oppressed. That's a problem of perspective. And yet there are people who would say, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. And that's a Jewish expression. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem, I have. Baruch Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave. So you need to do this and you need to work on it. Before Yom Kippur. And when Yom Kippur comes, welcome that emptiness. Welcome that space. Create that space inside yourself. Don't talk. Just concentrate on the words. Evaluate your life. If you feel that you are lost within the words of the Siddur, because sometimes the Siddur, believe me, both for Sfaradim and even more so for Ashkenazim, the, the, all the words there, sometimes it just like can overwhelm you and, and you say, what am I doing with this? So if somehow you reach that space, it's okay, since you don't talk anyway, just contemplate and that emptiness and experience the now. Experience the fact that you right now are standing in front of a Kadosh Baruch Hu and it's only you and Him and nothing else matters. It's only you and a Kadosh Baruch Hu in a very private and intimate uh, uh, seclusion. You and a Kadosh Baruch Hu within the space and which you had created to God inside your neshama. I tell you, it's okay. You do so, you would like Yom Kippur to extend five minutes longer, believe me. So everybody should have a Yom Kippur Sameach. And after Monday, we're going to go so for a break until after Sukkot. And still, if you have questions or anything like this, you can call me or email me at, uh, what is it, rabbageon at gmail.com. And you can go to our website at yeshivaetzion.com. If you have questions, donations, or anything else uh, you want to do, you can follow us there. So have a wonderful tefillah and a wonderful explore, expl exploration. And enjoy it and take advantage of it because right now that's all what we have. Mach